So, just like the speaking section, we will have some quick discussion on writing in general before jumping into the individual question types. This is absolutely necessary, especially because PTE writing is, both in terms of formats and requirements, very different from the traditional options. If you are to have one takeaway from this episode, let it be the fact that PTE writing focuses heavily on function rather than flair. In simpler words, your writing needs to convey the message efficiently rather than with lots of flashy vocabulary and complex structures. It's good to have some, but the general idea is that you should rather stick to simplicity instead of trying something new and then get it wrong. Again, playing safe is the main theme. For all intents and purposes, there are three writing question types. Two are in the writing section, which are summarized written text and write essay and another one at the beginning of the listening section called Summarize Spoken Text. Very creative naming by Pearson, I know. Note that there actually exist three more question types that affect the writing score, but those aren't writing questions in the traditional sense. Two are different types of filling the blanks, and write from dictation is just the writing version of repeat sentence. Therefore, we will exclude these question types in this video. For the three writing questions, they share some scoring categories. The first would be content. This is exactly like how content works for speaking questions. You have to properly address a question, be it to summarize a passage or to write an essay on a given topic. And it also has the anti-cheating mechanic that automatically gives you a zero on everything if content is zero. This usually wouldn't be a problem for speaking because we precisely know what needs to be said. This will be even less of a problem for writing, because unless you don't understand a single word in the question, you will have to try very hard to completely go off topic. The mechanic is just there to prevent some students from memorizing a beautifully written essay that has nothing to do with the question and just type it out during the test. Why would people even try that, you might ask? The main reason is that content is worth very little when compared to everything else. Here are some numbers to put this into perspective. For summarized written text, out of the 7 points for the raw score, only 2 come from content. The proportion is 2 out of 10 for summarized spoken text, and 3 out of 15 for the essay. Basically, content is only worth about 20-30% to 30 of the raw score for writing questions. Seems like a necessary precaution. However, contrary to speaking, writing questions have another hurdle that is the form. For all three question types, they will ask for a certain format and word count respectively. If you don't adhere to the requirements, not only will you lose points for form, you will also get a zero for every other scoring category except for content. So, you have to first make sure that content isn't zero or no further scoring will be done. And then you have to make sure that form isn't zero or no further scoring will be done. However, this isn't something you should worry too much either. Simply put, if you follow a few rules for the writing questions, you will never get a zero for form. Firstly, follow the word count. The word count will constantly show on the screen and you will be reminded on how many words you are supposed to write in the question title. Just follow that, will ya? Then, you have to make sure that you write complete sentences, begin sentences with a capital letter, end sentences with a period, and that's about it. Simple stuff. Don't just write keywords or bullet points, and follow the word limit. It shouldn't be that difficult if you have any experience with writing in English. As to specific requirements regarding form, especially for summarized written text, we will have a detailed discussion when they come up. Next would be grammar. This is the last scoring category shared by all three question types. There are some very interesting observations to be made about grammar. Firstly, the raw scores for grammar for all writing questions go from 0 to 2, but there exists some room for error, especially for the essay. For all question types, a 1 in grammar means you have some grammatical mistakes, but it doesn't affect understanding. This is very interesting. It basically means that certain grammatical mistakes are tolerated, but not others. This is not something that I understand completely, but the general philosophy will become clear to you guys once we understand what constitutes a 2 in grammar. For a summarized written text and summarized spoken text, a 2 means you have correct grammatical structures. As for the essay, a 2 means that errors are rare and difficult to spot. To put them all together, you should pay attention to the following. The first is quite obvious, which also aligns with the theme of the test. You should try to reduce mistakes to a minimum even if that means you have to make things simpler. This is what I constantly bring up with my students when going through their essays. 
If there are some convoluted way of writing that you feel adventurous enough to try, don't do it during the test. Stick to your comfort zone and try to make as few mistakes as possible. If your comfort zone is insufficient to help you achieve your target score, which is something that we can find out beforehand, you expand that comfort zone and experiment with new grammatical structures during practice, not gamble with your 300 bucks. The next one is the emphasis on structure, not on the comparatively trivial grammar stuffs. For PTE writing, if you have some mishaps on grammar, like mixing singular and plural forms, using the wrong tense, or something of a similar degree, it is not penalized as hard as messing up the grand structure, like missing a preposition or the lead of a clause. Sure, it is the best if you can avoid all mistakes in grammar, but certain ones are worse than others. Either way, simplify your writing and use familiar structures to ensure that you will at least get a 1 in grammar. This will work for most students, and for the ones going after a 79, I would recommend some practice to improve writing habits, so most mistakes are prevented to save time when revising. For grammar, the essay is of particular interest for you to improve and expand your repertoire because it has another scoring category called linguistic range, for which the raw score also ranges from 0 to 2. This is basically assessing how good you are with your structures and how complicated your sentences can be. Despite its existence, linguistic range does not equalize essays for PTE and for IELTS. You do not need to write an 8-point essay for IELTS to score a 79 for PTE. You should still focus on reducing your likelihood of making a mistake, and a little bit of complexity would suffice for most situations. The next scoring category is somewhat different for the essay than for summarized written text and summarized spoken text. Vocabulary is also scored between 0 and 2, but for the summary questions, it focuses on the keyword appropriateness. To put simply, you should summarize the passages using the words in the passage. It poses some challenge for students to get the keywords by reading or listening, but the basic concept is the same with describe image and retell lecture, and we will further elaborate on this topic in the respective videos. For the essay, however, vocabulary depends not only on how many big words you use, but also on how native your writing is. It specifically mentions idiomatic expressions and colloquialisms in the requirement, which are not necessarily difficult words, but more about the usage, so it has a stronger focus on your writing to be more native-like. Sound familiar? Instead of just throwing fancy words around and not actually using them correctly. Just like for linguistic range, if you want to try out something new, do it during practice, and let a knowledgeable teacher, like myself, to tell you if you're using the words in the right way. When we talk about essays, I will show you guys some simple ways to drastically improve your linguistic and vocabulary range with some simple but highly effective methods, but do bear in mind that this is pretty much only needed by students going after a 79. Then we have spelling. This is not scored for summarized written text, because whatever difficult words you want to write are shown to you in the passage. Well, I don't know what would happen if you do make a spelling mistake, but even for summarized spoken text and the essay, spelling really doesn't seem to matter too much. Firstly, it ranges from 0 to 2 as always, but if you make one mistake, it goes down to 1. If you make another, you get a 0. Seems a bit harsh, but again, it really doesn't seem to matter. Here's why. This is a report card of one of my best friends, who is also one of my earliest students. In terms of the four scores, he actually underperformed. Before this take, he actually got an average 86 on another try, but he got a 78 in one of the scores, so that sucks. Nevertheless, he eventually got it, and he's already gotten his invitation for immigration. We majored in the same thing. I got my PTE score before he did, but he was 25 and I wasn't, so he got invited, but I didn't. How stupid is this system? Whatever, moving on. Look at his spelling. He proves the theory that spelling is more of a joke, like answer to a question. I've seen many of his essays, and they are filled with spelling errors, hence the 18 in spelling. However, as to his disability for spelling, his words, not mine, he gets pretty close, and that's the important bit. At least your spelling can't be too wrong, or else the machine will not be able to recognize what you're trying to say, and that will cause a problem with your content, which we should have established this a long time ago, is not ideal. So yeah, I really couldn't be bothered with spelling at all, as long as you can get close. Another thing to look out for about spelling. 
Agencies claim that you should either completely go with American or British, but not mix them up. Again, I couldn't be bothered, simply because even if you do mix them up and the machine regards them as errors, it will still understand you. This definitely doesn't have to worry you. If you know the differences between American and British spellings, then great. If you don't, you should probably first worry about getting the spelling correct, instead of which correct version to go after. The essay has one more scoring category, which is the development structure and coherence. I don't want to talk about this too much because I only got an 87 in written discourse, so obviously I suck. Summarized written text and summarized spoken text don't have this because you just have to write a summary that encapsulates the important details. As for the essay, you need to develop your argument and show some logic, along with an introduction and a conclusion. So this basically evaluates all that. And there you go. These are all of the scoring categories for the writing questions. We will talk about them in more detail when we get to them. But for now, you have to remember that playing safe and making fewer mistakes is the most important goal. Get rid of whatever mentality you have when practicing for IELTS or TOEFL writing so we can start fresh and get it right. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if this has been helpful. And send me your writings so we can have a more specific discussion on how to improve in certain areas. I can't speak for you guys, but I'm not leaving home before the virus completely dies out, especially now that Dota has released the TI-10 Battle Pass. And I'll see you all next time.